It's time for the Douglas Coleman Show. Mr. Smooth and Savvy is joined by guests from all walks of life. From the entertainment industry to authors to political and social commentators. The famous and not so famous. The controversial and the light and fluffy. We have it all. Now, here's Douglas Coleman. Okay, please welcome to the Douglas Coleman Show, Tyvon Conrad. Hi, Tyvon. How are you? Hi, sir. I'm doing well today. Thank you for coming on the show. It's nice to have you here. And we're going to be talking about a book that you put out called Gone in a Bit. Is this your first book or have you written or published other work? I know. This is my very first book. Okay. Why did you decide to write a book? I decided to write a book to channel my aggression, my stress, my depression, my pain. Um, dealing with a mental health disorder, um, schizophrenia, to, um, you know, find hope, find a light in life, to make my day just a little bit better. Okay. It says that you were diagnosed in 2021. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, I was. Okay. Did you have any symptoms or, I mean, how did you know that there was something that you needed to have checked? Um, my, it started out as major depression. I just wasn't feeling myself. I was feeling disconnected from from life. I I just didn't have I it was I just didn't have a positive attitude um anymore and it was alarming to me that you know I was feeling like this because it's something that I never felt before. Was this a gradual progression or did it just hit you all yes, of a sudden? It, yes, very much so. It was a, it's a gradual it's a very gradual um mental health disorder. It is Okay, well, I don't know a lot about it, so maybe you can uh, fill in the blanks for me. So what sort of, other than depression, what other issues were you having? Um, problems like vertigo. I was feeling dizzy. I was feeling that I wasn't connected to, to life. Like I was feeling out like an outer body, outer body experience to life. Like I wasn't, um, you know, in control of myself or anything that I was doing, um, I felt like I was failing a lot. I was failing a lot. Um, uh, I had trouble. I was having trouble eating. I was having trouble sleeping. Um, I was having trouble engaging with other people. Um, and I was, and overall, I was just feeling completely not like myself. What were you doing at that time? I mean, for work or school or? At that time, unfortunately, I was in the, uh, um, and I say this because, you know, I was taking my job really seriously. I was in the Marine Corps, um, and that's when I, that's when I was started feeling all these symptoms. What, are you still in the Marine Corps? Uh, no, I've been out for about, I think about eight or nine years. I got out in 2016. You got out in 2016. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, eight years. Were you a, a combat Marine? I was an uh, infantry Marine. Yes, I was. Um, I didn't see combat, but uh, we did go on MUSE, which is a humanitarian aid mission um, deployment, which means like we were helping out other countries um, through training and and um, and we were helping them um, through communications. Were you in uh, Iraq or Afghanistan? No, I wasn't. Um, I was in places like Africa, Greek, Portugal, um, Kuwait, Greece, oh, okay. uh, and I think uh, uh, Qatar. Yeah, Qatar. Qatar. I always forget okay. that one. Was your overall experience as a Marine positive? Um, yeah, yes, up until I started feeling the symptoms of my schizophrenia. Um, everything, everything, you know, ran smoothly. Everything was nice. It was the ex exploration was excellent. Um, it was just a good. It was just a good time. So when you went to the doctors and they diagnosed you, what did they do for you? Did they put you on medication? Yes, that's they. Um, they they um, had me fill out a questionnaire. They um, they gave me um, therapy therapy time. Um, you know to talk to a therapist, um, and they prescribed me on medications. Okay, are you still currently taking medication? Yes, I am. All right. Does it help? Yes, very much so. Um, but I, I didn't get on the right, you know, it was a trial. There were, it was, it was, um, there was a bunch of trials before I actually found a medication that actually worked for me. 
almost over 15 some medications that I've tried didn't work for me. They, you know, helped, they, they made me too drowsy. They made it so, you know, I, I was having trouble, you know, eating. I wasn't able to digest my food. Um, they made me feel irritated a lot. Like I wanted to be aggressive. So it wasn't, it wasn't a spot. It wasn't a hit. It wasn't a hit and go. It was kind of a hit and miss situation. Oh, but eventually you got on the right medication and one that works for you. Yes. Yes. Around 2021, I finally found the right medication. Now is the prognosis for this that you'll have to remain on this medication forever? Yes. It's, it's a permanent, it's a permanent thing. I don't see, I don't foresee a life for me out, um, like without my medication because I don't know what that, I think maybe then I'll fall downhill. That'll fall downhill if I don't take the medication. Mental health is a big topic, and we don't have time to cover that whole thing, but I want to dive into a little bit of it. What do you think we're doing wrong in this country? Because there seems to be an awful lot of people living on the streets who have some form of mental illness. And, you know, let's face it, living on the streets is no good for anybody with or without mental illness, but I think it's particularly bad for them. What do you think we can do in this country to improve that? I think I think it would be good if we made people comfortable in made people comfortable with coming forward and and getting help, you know, putting out commercials or signs or flyers, you know, saying, "Hey, it's okay to come and ask for help if you think you have a mental, you know, health um uh, disorder or problem because people are scared to take that step to get on medication or talk to somebody about their problems or what they're feeling. Um, it's more so over maybe that, that being the problem that people are afraid to do this more than the people that are, you know, providing the help. You think there's still a stigma for people to admit or, or seek help for mental illness? Yeah. Absolutely. And yeah, because I mean, mental health, mental health, mental health is a scary thing, you know, and, and I, you know, I speaking for myself and as a schizophrenic and everybody's schizophrenia is different. So I can only speak for myself and what my signs and symptoms are because they're not like anybody else's, but I was afraid to get help at first as well because I didn't want to admit that I had a problem and it was scary to me. And, you know, I, once I started talking to talking to somebody, you know, I started feeling, you know, some signs that maybe, you know, uh, one day I'll, you know, get better or, you know, things that things will start working out for me. Were you ever um, in, the, in the danger category? I mean, were you ever a danger to yourself or to other people in terms of violence or suicide? Um, not exactly. I mean, I had, you know, I had depressive feelings about myself, thinking less of myself, thinking that I didn't matter to the world, thinking that I was just going to always be a failure. Okay, but but never to the point of danger, right? No, no. Well, that's one of the, the criteria in a lot of states for, and, and I'm saying this, the reason I'm bringing this up is because I think it's a fault with the system, that you have to get to the point of being either a danger to yourself or a danger to others before they'll intervene, okay? And that's like state law in many, many states. If you're not to that point yet, there isn't a lot of, like you said, there's no flyers. Right. And it's difficult yeah. for people to take the first step, because if you don't have somebody around you who can see the symptoms, do you know what I'm saying? That said, well, maybe you should see a doctor. Abs yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I like there's some kind of waiting list or something there. I, I really think um, I, that, that's that's definitely that's that's damaging to people that I think, well, I mean, yeah, it's damaging to, to the fact that you have to be on the verge of something very serious in order to get looked at for help. But I don't think, I think if people would just, you know, I think if there was something that would help people just come forward and, and understand like, it's okay, you know, to, to ask for help, you know, that would, that would change it. And that's why I wrote my book for people to read and find some inspiration, find some light and, you know, step forward to, you know, making them a better, making that person a better him or her, you know. Okay. So the book is called Gone in a Bit. And the idea being that hopefully this will 
loosen up the stigma about mental illness and mental health? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Is the book written like a, a biography? Why don't you give us kind of an overview of what the reader could expect to find if they picked up your book? Um, Gone in a Bit is about a schizophrenic view of living daily life, going through the struggles, trials, and tribulations of living with a mental health disorder. Gone in, Gone in a Bit was put together with real-world topics, uh, re- religious references, and and quotes from infamous people to create an interesting intellectual read for readers of any generation. Okay. Is it written in first person? I mean, like your experience personally or not? Um, yes, it, it is written in, it is written in my, in my own experience, um, in first person. So it, um, it's narrative? It's poetry. It's a, yeah. Yeah. Yes. And it's a, it's a poetry collection. In poetry? Uh, yes. Yes, oh, it's, oh. A, it's a po- poetry collection book. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. How long did it take you to uh, put this together? It took me four years to write, um, about a good four years to put together all the notations that I wanted to add into the book and the messages that I wanted to send across through the uh, to the world. How long has the book been out? The book came out on January 9th. Oh, just a couple of weeks. How's it doing? Um, I have gotten a couple of people that said they wanted to, they wanted to purchase the book already, um, about, about four or five people, you know, and it's, it's, it's exciting to see, you know, the birth of my project. Oh, good. I, I came up, my, I can't, I, I came up with an overview to, uh, say if, if you don't mind. Yeah, go ahead. Um, this world has so much diversity. Sometimes people are blind to see a world of mystery that only colors can define. My poems bring things to the light and captivate the epitome of daily struggles in a nutshell, creating a panorama on a fresh new canvas for all to see in plain blue sight. The idea of being in a lost and found, wandering around looking for hope in reality, that's crashing down. My, po- my collection of poems is a pillar concept of cognitive understanding and tranquility to form ideas where things don't connect, with therapeutic techniques of writing to create a subconscious understanding in a troubled world of fog and misunderstanding. Gone in a Bit is a schizophrenic's view of what it's like to be stressed out, fighting depression, living trial after trial on the short end of the bargain, where things don't come easy to feel disconnected from life while fighting a mental health disorder. Gone in a Bit is written by a schizophrenic, but is designed to reach any audience that suffer depression, stress, and anxiety. And it is also an intellectual read that covers a variety of real-world topics and concepts with a folklore style an open door for readers of any age or generation, a timeless experience. Oh, that's good. Okay. All right. Well, I think on that, we're going to wind this down. Thank you so much for coming on. Uh, the last question, do you have a website that you want to give out, a personal one or one for the book? Yes, sir. Um, vinehouse.online, V-I-N-E-H-O-U-S-E dot online. And that's where you can purchase the book. Okay. It'll take you right. It'll take you right to Amazon and Barnes and Noble. Well, thank you for coming on the show and uh, sharing your experience and your story. And uh, best of luck with the book. I hope it does well. Thank you, sir. It was a great talking to you. Mm-hmm.